Ron at Bridgecom Systems, KC0QVT. I'm here with Chuck, K0XM. We got a great video on tap for you right now. We're gonna be showing you guys how to align and tune a Bridgecom repeater to the RLC DSP404. We're gonna take you through the how to program the repeater, how to set up the controller, basically start to finish. And this will be a good uh, tutorial, uh, and it applies to almost all the controllers that are out there, but this is gonna be a complete walkthrough. We're gonna get into the computer, uh, show you how to program the repeater, show you how to program the, the RLC. So with that, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna jump into my computer and start off with the uh, programming of the repeater in a standalone state so that it'll work by itself and then we'll begin to build it up by attaching the RLC and then we're gonna check everything on the service monitor. So jumping into my computer. Hey, I'm in my computer now and I'm gonna go ahead and set this uh, profile up. So I'm gonna click the new profile and this is a VHF. Click OK, I don't care about the password. Okay, so I'm gonna create, left click on that and this uh, is W0GCK is the call, or the channel name we're going to apply to that. Uh, remote access code, I usually default to 12345. I'm going to put the broadcast ID as W0GCK. And I'm going to set the broadcast interval to zero because we want the uh, RLC to take care of that. So the when it's zero, it will not, uh, it, as you can see, it says disables. Okay, so the receive frequency on this particular repeater is 146.31, and it is wideband. And I want this to set the valid, the, the COS setting to valid signal. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do the transmit frequency of 146.91. I'm going to set the power to zero and I'm going to leave the pre-emphasis unchecked because we are going to let the RLC handle the audio conditioning. TX timeout timer is going to be 240, which is uh, four minutes. Uh, no courtesy tone delay. The cooling operation of the fans is TX only. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and that will get this channel set up. Now we go to the uh, user list and we're going to put a user in for 01 slot. So I'm going to do new user and this is a 141.3 tone. And I'm going to go down here and pull this up from the drop down menu and it transmits 141.3. And no courtesy tone, and the whole time is leave that at 250. This is effectively going to let the um, we want the the RLC ultimately to manage all this. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. All right, this is this profile set up, and this is a good start. Okay, so this is going to allow for me to do the testing on the repeater in a standalone configuration without the RLC in play, and so this will allow for me to do the alignment, get the transmitter up and going, and that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I've dumped the profile in, and now I'm going to enter the alignment menu by pressing and holding the RPTR button. The first entry is squelch of three. That's a good starting point. That means it's uh, probably going to unmute it around uh, 0.25 microvolt or minus 118, minus 119. Okay, so the next setting is the RX voice gain. Four is a good starting point. Leave that there. RX sub gain is four. Leave that there. And we've got this phase reverse detect option that is turns on what's called the uh, the reverse burst detect for squelch tail elimination. 99% of the customers that we've dealt with leave this off. So now you've got your RF power, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and start bringing this up to where we're going to we want 50 watts. So you can see on the power meter there that it's going up as I increase this number. Okay, that's 49. Okay. So 260 equals about 50 watts, okay? So I'm gonna turn that off now that that's set. Now the next entry is the RX voice game, Dave. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on up to seven, because that's pretty much where it needs to be on most of the uh, installs we've done. So I'm using that as a starting point. And now I'm gonna bring the voice fine tune up to about 200. Okay, and we're gonna fine tune that later once I key through the repeater and check my audio. but. I'll leave it there for now. Okay, now the uh, sub div is where we actually look at the subtone, and you can see it there on the display. Okay, and we are putting out a tone of 100 hertz. Okay, as a test tone, and we've got a fine tune adjust. Okay, that we can bring this up to where we want around five to six hundred hertz deviation. So you can see there. 
that we're at the bottom, we're at 500 now, okay, probably about 550, 570 hertz, okay. So now we've got the station ID. Now this is a, our Morse code station ID tone. It, it comes out at 800 hertz, and you want this to deviate somewhere around 1,000 hertz. And that's a good number. Okay, then you've got the RX frequency tune. And this is where you can actually fine tune the frequency error. And it's a number between 0 and 255. Ideally around 127 is right in the middle and that should put it right on the money. And you can see up there that the frequency error is as I've turned that, it's, the, the meter's keeping up. We're at around 46 hertz. Back that down. So definitely within spec on frequency air. So we're 26 hertz off. Can't get much better than that. Maybe you can get it better. No, it's getting closer, okay. Okay, then you've got the next setting is the flash to firmware. You want to leave this off unless you're going to do a firmware update, okay. So now I'm going to exit the menu by pressing and holding the RPTR button and I'm going to key up on 146.31 and I'm keying in with a 141.3 tone and you can see that it's putting out the 49 watts modulating the carrier and I'm just going to do a quick five count and I should see the deviation somewhere around four kilohertz five it's peaking out so I'm going to back that down Five. All right, the repeater's now aligned for standalone operation. So now we're gonna we're gonna get it set up with. I'm gonna jump back into my computer and I'm going to align uh, set the programming up for working with the RLC. Okay, I've read the profile back out of the repeater and it has adjusted the uh, power setting as you can see here and everything should be the same, okay? I'm going to cancel that now. Here's the, here's where um, you'll, you'll need to adjust, okay? Because we want the RLC to totally manage the transmitter of the repeater. So we're going to put this sysop tone in, okay? And this is going to be a 141.3 as well. And I'm going to change the sign it comes up on the repeater to 141.3 and we can go ahead and change this okay now there's an app note uh, in, on our website on connecting these repeaters to amateur radio controllers and this is what needs to be done so you effectively got a another tone like you've got with the slot one except when the call comes in on 141.3 it won't engage the transmitter because by design anything that comes in on the sysop slot will not engage the transmitter so we take advantage of that to allow for the RLC to completely manage the transmitter because when the when the PTT line of the transmitter is engaged by the RLC it causes the slot or the tone in slot one to be transmitted okay so with that said this is going to dump in and I'll show you the results of this okay so I've programmed the profile in for how it should work as a repeater connected to an external controller and I'm going to demonstrate that because you'll see that the RX and the valid light will not come on I have yet to hook the controller up so what this means then is that the uh, internal controller is only working on in its receive state with that said we're going to move forward with actually connecting the controller to the repeater hi folks it's Chuck K0XM, going to show you what we've done with the RLC DSP404 and the, and the uh, BCR50V. Uh, right, real quick, there's some jumper settings, dip switch settings in the RLC you need to be aware of. Each one, each port has its own set of, of dip, uh, switch settings. This is in the pinout, these orientations are in the pinout diagram that's going to be available on our website for the RLC D, uh, DSP404. We've made up an interface cable to go from the 25 pin on the back to the DB9 on the RLC. And give me just a minute here, we'll hook this all up. And we're looking at the interfacing of an RLC DSP404 to a BridgeCom BCR50V. The Central Kansas Great Bend Kansas Radio Club, W0GCK, 
sent us the controller to interface to the repeater and Ron and I worked on it and got it straightened out. In this video will be a screen cap of the internet connect cable which will also be on our website for this particular controller. Here's, I've got the software up and this is the configuration page for the DSP-404. I'm in port 1. Okay, so I'll close this out. I'm in port 1 configuration. And I've got it set up with set any required conditions. Which means that I can go either core or CTCSS. Or I can have both of them turned on. So let's have the controller go to core. Core access only. And you'll see a light. And as you notice over here, it's red green on this. That tells me that I'm receiving and transmitting on the repeater over here on the command uh, status page. Now it's transmitting. Now it's idle again. All right, so let's switch it to CTCSS access. All right, I'm low, I'm low active on CTCSS. My core with the wiring diagram is high active. There are dip switches to set inside the uh, controller. We're going to show you how to set those. But let's show CTCSS access only. All right, we're transmitting here. I've got a activity light here. I'm still showing my core activity, but it's not since uh, detecting it in the controller. And I've got activity and transmit, receive and transmit on the controller itself. I let up. There's my hang time. And then the repeater drops. Now, if I put both of them on with high, act high active core and low active CTCSS, then I'm good on activity also. If I change the polarity on one of them, the repeater will go to open squelch. Do the det detect on the, uh, on the circuitry. Radio setup is set up as a, a repeater on this port. You got the repeat radio ID, you got a port type, your audio levels. I have the receiver audio automatic gain control set. Right now it's at 9.99. As I put an input signal into it, you can watch the screen change. This is K0 X-ray Mexico. Let me run some touch tones. Okay, there's my uh, my level set for the uh, to double check the touch tones. I ran a touch tone pad test, which is a default in the RLC controller. So that's pretty much it on the controller setup, folks. Um, you can adjust the voice gain, the tone gain, uh, the reset beep, and the transmit overall gain. You set the transmit messages, the are the ID messages, the courtesy beep, and all your timers from this DSP 404 software that RLC has free on their website. And we'll continue with the rest of the videos on this particular install. We've got the RLC hooked into the BCR50V and we've got the level set for three kilohertz in to three kilohertz out. It's a good level. The controller likes our touch tones like I showed you on the uh, Bandicam, the screenshot software. And so what I'll do right now is I'm gonna run a real quick touch tone test. As you can tell, the audio level sounds good. Repeat audio is good. And that's it in a nutshell, folks, how to hook an amateur controller into one of the BCR50V or 220 or 440U repeaters. Give us a call at Bridgecom, 816-532-8451. Hit our Contact Us page, our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll answer any questions you got. Once again, Ron, KC0 KVT is over in the next room handling the important stuff. This is Chuck, K0XM at Bridgecom 73. Props to the Sand Hill Amateur Radio Club in Garden City, Kansas for giving us the RLC and the interface. Uh, we really appreciate it. We had not seen one in my 40, almost 40 years of repeater building. I've never had my hands on an R RLC until now. So thank you very much. 
And gentlemen, your repeater will be heading your way shortly. And get ready to enjoy it.